Hi, my name's Daniel Cunningham. I'm the Natural Asset Manager within the Stormwater Team at Sydney Water. I'm here today in Haynes Reserve in Canterbury to talk about Cup and Saucer Creek wetland that you can see behind me. We constructed the wetland in 2010 and we've developed this short film to help explain how the wetland was constructed, what it's designed to do and help promote similar projects elsewhere. Haynes Reserve and the wetland is located just off Burner Street in Canterbury. We're right near the confluence of Cup and Saucer Creek and the Cooks River and the wetland is directly adjacent to the Cooks River Cycleway and we're also directly opposite the old sugar mill building just across the river. The wetland's located in a highly urbanised area, which means almost half of its catchment has been converted to impervious surfaces like roads, roofs, car parks. This means when it rains, our waterways become highly polluted with stormwater runoff. As well as that, there's not very much land left that acts as habitat for native wildlife. The Cup and Saucer Creek wetland was constructed as part of Sydney Water's Cooks River Naturalisation Project. This broader project aims to remove deteriorated sections of the Cooks River's banks and replace them with more naturally sloped riverbanks stabilised with sandstone and native plants. The opportunity to construct a wetland in Haynes Reserve was identified during the initial master planning phase of the naturalisation project. Haynes Reserve was a large grassed open space that wasn't highly used by the local community. The addition of the wetland has improved the aesthetics of the reserve, provided social amenities like seating, pathways and an outdoor classroom, as well as treat treating local stormwater runoff and providing valuable freshwater wetland habitat adjacent to the river. The wetland was a partnership project between Sydney Water, Canterbury City Council the Sydney Metropolitan Catchment Management Authority with funding from the Australian Government. As the lead partner, Sydney Water acted as the project manager as well as providing funding. Canterbury City Council provided funding, contributed to the wetland design and construction and after the 12 month establishment period now own and manage the wetland. The Sydney Metro CMA also contributed towards the design and construction and administered funds from the Australian Government through the National Water Security Plan for Cities and Towns as part of the Water for the Future strategy. Thompson Burrell Landscape Design developed the concept and detailed designs and helped supervise the construction. Total Earth Care constructed the wetland and continued to maintain it. So we, we had a large project on the Cooks River called the Cooks River Urban Water Initiative and that was looking for existing projects that we could, um, that we could work with or develop up or value add to and this is just a great opportunity to, um, to work with this project, with the, the work that Sydney Water was going to do on the riverbanks and to um, get this wetland um, put in as well. And um, we took the project to our reference committee, which included um, community and government and even um, scientists. And they, they thought it was fantastic as well. And, and it was just great to have Sydney Water and Canterbury Council and ourselves coming together with the community on this project. Because we were retrofitting the wetland into an established urban area, it was really important to engage with all stakeholders. This included the project partners, as well as local environment groups and the adjacent residents. Firstly, we needed to know if these stakeholders wanted something like this in their backyard. And if they did, what did they value most about it? What did they want it to look like? And how would they most like to interact with it? If they had any concerns, how could we address those in the design? We did this through a series of newsletters, surveys, group workshops and one-on-one -on -one meetings, as well as some site events both during and after the construction. Luckily, all the stakeholders were very supportive. We really listened to what people were telling us and altered the designs to incorporate their ideas and address the concerns. Some people were so keen to be involved with the wetland that they've now volunteered to monitor water quality above and below the wetland and there's another group helping weed and maintain the wetland. The key objectives of the wetland are to reduce pollution entering the Cooks River, provide valuable and rare freshwater habitat for native wildlife, improve the social amenity and aesthetics of Haynes Reserve, and to demonstrate best practice water sensitive urban design, and by doing this, promote future similar projects. 
As a broad overview, the wetland system works by diverting water flowing down Cup and Saucer Creek into the wetland. Within the wetland, natural processes remove pollutants before releasing water back to Cup and Saucer Creek. To get water to the wetland, we needed to divert flows from the creek whilst maintaining the hydraulic capacity of the channel. By this, I mean we didn't want to build anything that would stick up and impede flows, particularly during storm events. We also wanted to screen out gross pollutants like plastic bottles and chip packets from entering the wetland and minimise maintenance of the offtake structure itself. In the most part, this design achieves those objectives. However, we do get a build-up of leaf litter and gross pollutants during long periods without rain that can partially block the offtake. From the offtake structure, an underground pipe carries creek water to the wetland. Hydraulic modelling was used to specifically size the pipe to control the amount of flow entering the wetland. This both maximises how well the wetland can treat pollution and protects the wetland from damage by large storm flows. So when there's heavy rain in the catchment, the inlet pipe fills until it's flowing at its capacity. Any extra flow passes right over the offtake structure and bypasses the wetland. One last point on the inlet pipe. The pipe was designed to maximise its grade or slope so that the water inside it will flow as fast as possible. If the pipe grade was too flat and the water inside it flowed too slowly, any suspended sediment that the water was carrying would settle within the pipe and cause a blockage. The wetland is divided into two cells or ponds. There's a top pond and a lower pond. This top pond, the first area, is a deep sedimentation pool. This is where water first enters the wetland. It's designed to allow flows to slow, which allows any suspended sediment to drop to the bottom. Then, every five to ten years, we can come in and excavate that sediment out and remove it. The marsh zones are quite shallow and are designed to slow and spread flows into densely planted areas to maximise the amount of plant surface area that the water comes in contact with. The plants themselves remove pollution by trapping remaining suspended sediment and using some pollutants as food. The hardest worker in the marsh zone is the slimy layer of what's called biofilm that coats the plant stems in the water. This biofilm is fantastic at removing pollution from the water as it passes through. As you can see, the marsh zones also provide fantastic habitat for a range of plants and animals. The lower cell or pond performs the same pollution removal and habitat provision function as the upper cell. However, if you compare the two cells, you can really see that the upper cell cops a real beating from pollution, so its habitat values are really reduced. Whereas the lower cell, the water's a lot cleaner and the habitat is much more improved. From the lower cell, water runs through a final underground pipe that discharges back into Cup and Saucer Creek. This also has a water control pit installed, which allows manipulation of water levels in the lower cell. Two specifically designed water testing pits have been installed on both the pipe leading to the wetland and the pipe leaving the wetland. This allows easy and safe access to take water samples to test how effective the wetland is at reducing pollution from the water that passes through. Results from the Cooks River Valley Association, who volunteer to monitor the wetland water quality, show quite significant reductions in nutrients like available phosphate, as well as suspended sediments. Over 40,000 native plants were planted in and around the wetland. All of the plants were sourced from local provenance seed. This means their seeds were collected from remnant plants that are local to the Cooks River Valley and are perfectly suited to grow in this situation and provide the natural habitat for local wildlife.
Uh, yeah, the, the community has always been interested in this this uh, spot of land, I suppose, because it's so it's such a big access to the river, and it's um, a, a large area, and and right next to the Cup and Saucer Creek, and right on the Cooks River. And the community has voiced an opinion for many years that um, it's an area that something can be done with it, because it was open field that was just being mown, um, and um, I think there was s certainly. By the time the Urban Water Initiative came around and, and there was talk about this site being developed as a wetland, there was already then a, um, a strong community sense of this is a great project, this, is, this, this has potential to be really, really positive. So um, it was the bringing together of community um, attitude and, and opinion with um, the organisations involved uh, and goals. And I think um, there'd been a number of consultations with the community and once the plan started to get um, firmed up, I think the consultation that went on with the people around the river, that what was going to happen wasn't going to um, damage their properties, in fact it would probably enhance them, the, the level of um, involvement and commitment from the community became very high. I think it's just amazing. I, I saw a film um, just the other day sent to me by a community member who's a, a father who made a film with his daughter talking about the wetlands. Um, I've had school groups down here, in fact I showed, uh, I was with a school group today and I showed them photos of this area before the wetlands was even begun and um, what, it, what it looks like now and they're just stunned. Uh, our, our group is, is involved in maintaining it, we come down with, um, in conjunction with Canterbury Council every month and we, we do um, weeding and maintenance of the area and it's always, I mean at the moment, you have to look around and see that everything's in flower, it looks just stunning and there's just, it's just a great feeling. I think people just love coming here and being here and looking at it.